Most, if you're currently unemployed, but you are looking for a high limit credit card from Navy Fed, I want to say there is hope, okay? In today's conversation, I want to spill all the things you need, all the things you need to uh, do in order to get the high limit credit card you, de you need uh, and deserve. Don't you go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ought to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka, and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to give you the step-by-step -step you need to follow if you are trying to get a Navy Fed credit card with no job, okay? If you are unemployed right now, this is a temporary situation. You have to apply, you have to use a certain uh, steps. There is a certain logic, there is a certain formula that I want to share with you in terms of uh, applying for a Navy Fed credit card with no job. The first thing is you need to demonstrate liquidity. This is really important. The thing what I'm trying to say here is that people sometimes confuse unemployment with lack of cash flows, okay? You can be unemployed, in other words, you don't have a regular nine to five job, but you have other sources of income. You might get alimony, you might get some dividend income, you might have some side gigs and whatnot. So it's important to demonstrate how you will pay back whatever charge, whatever expense you charge on the card. Because Navy Fed is really worried about default risk, right? They're worried about CUR. You are you have a high credit utilization ratio on the card. So if you are able to uh, explain to them very clearly how you are going to pay back whatever you charge on the card, that's a great point for you. And this has nothing to do with your job status, by the way. Okay, it's very important that we segregate. Your job status, that's one thing, from your uh, cash flow situation. And when we talk about liquidity, we're talking about your uh, your cash flows, okay? And you can actually uh, determine your cash flows through your budget or through a statement called, an accounting statement called your personal cash flow statement, okay? It's really important that whatever method you use to calculate your, neck, your, your cash flows, you have to be able to have a number at the end of the month. So what's your number, boss? What's your number? Is it 1,000? Is it 1,500? In other words, you eating, you still eating three times a day, a day, right? Even though you don't have a, you don't have a job, you are getting the cash from somewhere. So you have to be in a situation where you have to explain that cash flow that you have, okay? And one thing I also want to say here is that you want to be in a situation constantly. When we talk about not having a job, you are put in a situation where you have to constantly improve your cash flow. You have to constantly find side jobs. You have to find uh, side gigs. You need to uh, work two jobs or three jobs, okay? So unemployment is a relatively, uh, I would say, temporary situation. I mean, it should be anyway. You don't want to have a full-time unemployment. This is uh, There is a dichotomy here in, in that, in that uh, phrase. But you want to be in a situation where you explain to Navy Fed that you will have enough cash flows to repay whatever you charge on the card. What I'm trying to say here is that you don't have this kind of conversation. You cannot have it. You cannot have it online. If you apply online, you cannot have it. But if you apply over the phone or you apply at a branch, you can have it. The second thing I want you to do, which is related to the first thing, is you want to, de to demonstrate other sources of income that you may have, okay? So, at first, we talked about liquidity. Now, we want to talk about income. Again, I want to say very clearly here, simply because you, you don't have a job doesn't mean you don't generate income from elsewhere, okay? Folks, there are a lot, when we talk about when, when it comes to income, Navy Fed actually approves all kinds of income. For instance, social security benefits, either retirement or disability. So, grandpa, grandma, are you uncle, aunt, I'm talking to you. Are you currently uh, receiving social security benefits from Navy Fed? I mean, from Navy Fed, from, uh, from the government. If you do, then you can show this to Navy Fed and say, hey, listen, here's my proof of income, okay? I'm not working, but here's my proof of income. Dividends, payments, or other investment income. This could also be another source of income. That's very important. And the thing is, if you have a job offer, I mean, we have seen for, we have seen Navy Fed accepting as a proof of income people who are currently unemployed, but they have a job offer with an offer, an acceptance letter, okay, that 
the person will start one week one month from now or three months from now as long as the letter is legit and navy fed is able to verify that letter with the employer they should be able to issue a credit card okay if you have an, a retirement account including a pension this could also serve as income okay and if you receive a va benefits okay veterans administration benefits okay but again if you if you are if you have side gigs or business startups so i'm just giving you a non-exhaustive constellation of uh, income sources okay we can also have self-employment income you probably are a sole, sole proprietorship and uh, you do little things here and there just to make ends meet okay you also have if you receive unemployment benefits this could also serve as a uh, as an uh, income sources royalty payments let's say you have an you have a book out there on kdp on amazon kdp where you receive uh, royalties okay you have a partner income you have child support you have spousal support you have tip income and alimony so i just give you a long list but again this is not exhaustive this can depend on your situation but i just want to show you that when we talk about people being unemployed it doesn't mean they don't have income those are two different things okay having a, a nine to five day job regular job and actually pulling income from all sources i mean there's something even called the passive income, okay? People actually are making money when they're sleeping anyway. The third thing I want you to think about, boss, if you are trying to have a high limit credit card from Navy Fed and you are unemployed, you have to care about your FICO score. I mean, you knew I was gonna talk about that anyway. I mean, there is no no way we, we are going to have a serious discussion about credit cards and Navy Fed credit cards for that matter without touching on the essential or on the quintessential point of uh, of maintaining a decent credit score. And one thing I want to say here is that when we talk about FICO score, we're not just talking about something something that is static. That's one thing people make a mistake about. You know, they checked their credit score maybe three months ago and they were at uh, 675. And then they, they were thinking that today, 90 days later or 180 days later, it's still, six, six, it's still 675. No, a FICO score is updated every month and it's something very dynamic, okay? So you wanna be in a situation where you are constantly improving your FICO score. You are constantly making sure that your accounts are up to date, that your accounts, does, your accounts don't have any kind of a derogatory or adverse or negative or detrimental effects, okay? Because you, you really want to fight detrimental effects as soon as possible. You want to contact the data furnishers. I mean, everything you need to do, okay? Everything you need to do to actually make sure your FICO, your FICO reports are, are, are accurate. Do it, do it, you know? And uh, so it, it, it's not it's not about, it's not about always uh, being in a situation where you are constantly fighting for something, no. It is something you need to have. Your FICO score must be accurate because Navy Fed will make sure that your FICO score is accurate, okay? And Navy Fed pulls TransUnion, okay, which have the Vantage, the Vantage score 2.0, but there is a strong correlation between your FICO score and the Vantage score 2.0. What I'm trying to say here is that whatever you can do to improve your FICO score, to improve your financial response, your financial situation, do it, okay? You can improve your debt utilization ratio, your credit utilization ratio. Okay, you can ask for a little grace. I mean, whatever you can, whatever you can do, whatever you can do. Okay, so you have uh, it's totally up to you. But my point here is that your FICO score is important, especially if you don't have a job. Navy Fed is going to scrutinize the other parts, the other components of your financial life to make sure things are clean. So think about it. If you are unemployed, but you happen to have a high FICO score, think about the positivity this will bring to you. It will be fantastic because Navy Fed will be thinking, hey, listen, here is someone who has a great FICO score. We can work with him or her. I want to talk about card fitness. The card fitness. Okay. The thing here is that when you are unemployed and you are looking for a Navy Fed credit card, you cannot go for all four or six credit cards. No. Navy Fed has six credit cards, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't go for f all six credit cards. In other words, I'm not asking you to be random here. I'm asking you to be strategic, to think about the, the consequences of your card choices and make sure that you go for the right card for you. The card whose requirements fit your financial situation, fits your personal situation as of today. Okay, this is important. So you want to look at your spending patterns. Okay, spending patterns are really important. W what do you spend on? Groceries? entertainment dinner do you do uh do you do like a barbecue uh afternoon every saturday evening 
Saturday afternoon. Okay, what do you do? I mean, I'm I'm trying to really get a, get to understand what your spending patterns are. Okay, so this is really important, and your FICO score, of course, will have an impact on your on the card you get. You want to avoid cards that require high FICO score, like the Visa Signature Flagship Rewards, unless you have a high FICO score. Okay, so you want to focus. If if I were to advise you, if you're in a situation that's a little like if you have less than stellar credit, you want to focus more on car on cars like I mean the three cars. You have the cash rewards, okay, that allows you to earn up up to uh, one one point seventy five percent cash back on all purchases. This is a great card for everyday uh, cash back. You can also focus on the platinum, okay. This is the card that allows you to minimize to minimize the monthly payments with uh, their lowest rate cards, okay. Or you can try to go for the gold rewards. What we love with the Go Rewards is that you are earning more when you are on the Go. So, so you get three X points at restaurants, two X points on gas, and one X points on everything else. So, credit card, credit card, credit card. Have you found the right credit card for you when it comes to the right Navy Fed credit card? Talk to me, boss. Have you thought about uh, the card, the Navy Fed credit card that will actually suit you, you know, wholeheartedly? Have you gone? Have you gone through the research? We've done the research for you. If you have questions, please place them in the comment section we have actually videos that, that cover the, the subject so you have a clear idea what you need to you need to do to get the card you need i want to talk to you now about your nfcu npr i want to talk about navy fed banking relationship and this is an important topic and uh, people always uh, ask the questions how um, how much do i need to put Okay, so how much are we talking about? And our answer is very simple. There is no set amounts, but at a minimum, if you have three digits, that's kind of cool. In other words, if you're trying, if you want Navy Fed to take you seriously, you got to have more than uh, $1,000 in uh, various credit and savings accounts. Okay, if you have, uh, th I mean, four digits, that's what I meant, th four digits. If you have 300 or 400, whatever, it's a good start, but it's not going to change anything. It's not going to help you get the high limit Navy Fed credit card that you need and deserve anyway. Especially if you're unemployed, you want to make sure that you beef up your uh, your banking relationship with, with Navy Fed. So you are in a stronger position when you discuss when you discuss with them. Okay, so make sure that you have a savings account. Make sure that you have a, a checking account. That's important. If you have extra money, if you want to, uh, you can explore their CDs. They have great CDs with the wonderful APYs, okay? And uh, explore your money market. Their money market accounts. This also have uh, great APYs, so those are really good, okay? And one thing I want to tell everybody here is that we got to be serious about also buttressing, about solidifying our financial future. Because right now, I always say this, okay? Right now, you are in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, and you're thinking, listen, I'll always be uh, strong and vigorous. No, this life is crazy, okay? Once you hit 60 or 70, you have a, a new slew of uh, of uh, phew, of uh, diseases, okay? Of uh, medical conditions and whatnot. So the whole thing is you need to have extra cash to, uh, to actually take care of those because you will have insurance for sure, but there are certain things that will be out of pocket. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make is consider a retirement savings account with Navy Fed. Consider an individual retirement account. You want to give some thoughts, some serious thoughts to that right now. Okay, this is some serious stuff, and it will allow you to actually be in a situation where you can control your future. Okay, Navy Fed also offers an education savings account, so ESA. That's kind of cool because it allows you to be uh, to 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 save money for your children if that's what you want, or for yourself if that's what you want. Okay, consider also the Navy Federal Investment Service, which is the wealth management. Uh, unit of Navy Fed, and if you are interested in, uh, you know, if you have some extra cash, you want to open a bank account, you want to open an, a brokerage account, this could be great for you. I'll be right back, right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are also having a conversation about uh, Navy Federal credit cards, how do you get high limits if you are unemployed, okay? And one thing I want to say here is that you want to constantly lower your debt-to-income ratio before applying for a Navy Fed credit card, 
okay this is really important i mean the credit card is is uh, going to help you you know manage your finances better but make sure that you have a low dti i mean everybody talks about dti as if this is something that is static i said this before dti is a dynamic thing as it is a moving target okay but the target here should be what should be 20 percent. some people say 30 percent. we say the same thing but if you say 30 percent, you probably and, and you achieved 35 percent. that's really bad but if you say 20 percent and you achieved 25 percent, that's still good okay so that's why we want to go for the most extreme number some people even love a single digit mpr a single digit dti this is really good so the lower the lower your dti the better it is for you okay so you need to think about what really matters in terms of uh so what really affects your dti well dti means your debt to income uh, debt to income ratio so you put on top of the fraction this fraction you put all debt payments divided by your gross income now you probably have no gross no gross income right now in terms of a regular nine to five job but you probably have a, let's say you have a, a seasonal job you have a temp job you have a cyclical, cyclical job you have a unemployment you receive something so what will happen here is that your income will go down if your income goes down and your debt does not go down what will happen is you have a very high dti and you don't want that you definitely don't want that okay so you want to constantly pay off uh, your your bills you want to find a way to reduce your, uh, your your cost of living in other words you have to reduce the expenses you charge on the card while you're being unemployed because that's what really matters you need to survive you need to survive in this uh, short period where things are tight where you are constantly thinking about what uh, what's what tomorrow is going to bring but the most important thing is you want to be in a situation where you are able to lower your dti by lowering your expenses by living within your means okay by monitoring your dti every month so you know that okay this last month i was at uh, 40 percent or 50 percent this month i am at 20 25 percent or 10 percent so this will boost your confidence Before I close today's conversation, I want to give you a few pro tips, okay? And it's really important to understand that when we talk about, when we talk in general about Navy Fed credit cards, people just have a card that they have, they love, they love the design. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is some people get a card because of they love the design, but this is a childish boss i'm not saying the act itself is, is challenged but i'm just saying you need to have more requirements before choosing a navy fed credit card and the, the thing is it's very easy because you only have six credit cards so the universe is already, already limited so you need to be able to identify yourself in the kind of uh, credit card you want right okay and understand the requirements of the specific card you want okay in terms of the age the income the residency or citizenship the credit score okay you also want to think about the information that you need to figure out how you can fill out an application a credit card application so we're talking about personal information such as full name date of birth social security number okay your social is important your country of citizenship and you, in your contact information in that session on the on the application form you have the address the email address okay the phone number this is important and they want to know more about your financial information also okay so your employment status so navy fed wants to know you know your your financial information you're not employed you're not employed right now it's okay it's okay but are you getting money from elsewhere okay what is your total annual income excluding the nine to five that you don't have at the moment you have a uh, what is your non-taxable annual income okay so what are the, your monthly housing costs okay what is your bank account information so my, my thing is that you have to be in a situation where you constantly improve those metrics you constantly make sure that you are providing data to a navy fed uh, uh, to the navy fed okay and also one thing i want to say here is that think if having an authorized user can also help you and they'll also ask you uh, this some kind of uh, balance transfer deals. One thing we have seen over and over again is that if you actually apply at a branch, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, I'll keep saying it until people change. If you apply at a branch, if you're able to go one one morning after, afternoon to a branch, they will explain everything to you. They will explain everything to you, and that's what you want. You want to actually put, you want to boost your chances of approval. You don't want to walk around and just be like this, and I have to do this grind, and this is grind and grinding and grinding. No, no. You want to, you want to actually be in a position where you contact uh, a Navy Fed branch and you have a conversation.
Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about how to get a Navy Fed credit card with no job, okay? So Navy Federal credit cards, how to get the uh, high limit one as a jobless applicant. First, think about liquidity. Second, your income. Your FICO score is number three. Card fitness is number four. NFCU NPR number five. And uh, I share with you some bonus information and some pro tips information. Thank you so much for your attention. I love you. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. Thank you.